On the day he died, he was on reconnaissance patrol. He was shot in the head. After his death, he was awarded the Iron Cross, second class. Flanders, Belgium, a common grave for soldiers who died in World War I. Over 44,000 men are buried here. Rebecca Burmer and Christoph Zentis are high school students from Kassel. They're trying to learn as much as possible about an officer, Heinrich Finkelstern, who once attended their school. This is the Friedrichsgymnasium in Kassel. A lot of the students here are studying history. This is a monument to the fallen soldiers of the world wars. 14, 18, 14 under W. This must be him, Winkelstein Heinrich. The start of a major research project. We are studying what we can about him so that we can get a better idea of what the war was really like. Winkelstern attended our school. He studied a lot of the same subjects that we do. So we can relate to him pretty well. Most of them were actually volunteers. They'd taken their final exams early. By the age of 17 or 18, they were dead. The same age as Rebecca and Christoph. Here the students visit the war archive in Munich. We don't want anything like this to happen ever again. It's not realistic to hope for peace everywhere, but we can help make sure it doesn't happen again on this scale. After a year of research, Christoph and Rebecca have learned that Heinrich Winkelstern was an officer in the Bavarian army, and he was 32 when he died. Now they're at the Bavarian War Archive. They hope to find out more about his life. Just type in the subject you want to search. World War I. Be a little more specific. The archive contains wartime personnel rosters and files, all handwritten in old-style cursive script. But the students are well prepared. Lothring. Lothringen. I'm sure it says Lothringen. Nope. Why not? There's a T. There's an H. Yeah, I guess so. Lothringen, definitely. This file has Winkelstern's military ID with all his personal data. He'd been a circuit court judge in Aschaffenburg, single, and an officer in the reserves. The file contains a few surprises as well. No. no. What did they find? This is right next door to our school. So that's why he went to the Friedrichsgymnasium. It was only a five-minute walk from his house. Senior Archive Director Heinz-Jürgen Weber has something special for the students the wartime diaries from Winkelstern's regiment. An imperial edict decreed that all the day's relevant events must be recorded. Rebecca and Christoph have found an entry from November 1st, 1914, the day that Winkelstern died. But they can't make out the archaic handwriting. Yeah, yeah it takes practice. This experienced historian helps out. Enemy planes dropped bombs on the column lost two wounded, one of them Bauer, the driver. Rebecca has an idea. That was the first sentence from the regimental diary for his last day. But who was Heinrich Winkelstern? We can find out something about his service and how he died, so we're working in reverse. Now the students have a week left to write the speech that they're set to give at Winkelstern's grave in Flanders. A few days later, they're on the bus to Belgium, polishing the speech, which will be given at a memorial ceremony at the German military cemetery in Langemark. 
Rebecca is taking part in the Peace and Commemoration Project on her own time. Her history teacher, Renee Malm, admires her dedication. A lot of students say that this project showed them that it's important to preserve peace and that peace in Europe today can't be taken for granted. It has to be reinforced again and again through commemoration and commitment. After nearly eight hours on the road, they finally arrive at Peace Village near Ypres. This international hostel was built on the site of former battlefields. The next morning, Rebecca and Christoph see the remains of trenches for the first time. Here in Plustert, they've been thoroughly restored. A century ago, life in the trenches was sheer hell. Nearly 10 million soldiers on both sides were killed in World War I, including more than 100,000 in the first Battle of Ypres in October and November 1914. Among the dead was field artillery officer Heinrich Finkelstern. The victims have been honored at ceremonies held in the center of the town of Ypres every evening, almost every year since 1928. Here, British troops take part. Hundreds of tourists are here to watch. Some young football players from Liverpool and Southampton have brought memorial wreaths. The next morning, the students from Kassel look at a map of the region's many military cemeteries. There's the map. And that's the cemetery we're headed for. Langemark. Heinrich Winkelstern is buried there in a common grave. This was trench warfare. The trenches went on for kilometers. Thousands of people died fighting over every centimeter of ground. 200 meters forward, 200 meters back. <laughs> One hundred years later, the German War Graves Commission has organized an international youth conference here. Some young British football players from Liverpool and Southampton are here. Participants plan the ceremony together. Some of those buried at Langemark played for Berlin's Hertha football team. Rebecca and Christoph pass on the results of their research to the football players. Now they'll decide who does what at the ceremony. The Hertha players want some music to be played. They've picked out a song written by a German soldier during the war. What have we been talking about here? You can imagine what it must have been like for the soldiers in the trenches. We're going to undertake our first ceremony of the day, uh, and I'm very pleased to hand over to the boys from the Liverpool Football Club. It's a rainy, dreary day. The students try to keep up their spirits. OK, so it's raining. But the conditions in World War I were miserable, especially in the trenches. So a little rain right now is nothing. We've got umbrellas, but those soldiers had to crawl through the mud, and rats would chew at them while they slept. It's one thing to hear about it, and another to participate in a ceremony like this. You realize that these were real people who lost their lives in the war. It's still 15 minutes to Langemark. The speech is almost ready. 
They just need a transition from the dead Hertha soldiers to Winkelstern. One of them was Heinrich Winkelstern, or is Heinrich Winkelstern, is or was. One of them was, so he lived, but now he is lying here. But he lived. I tend to say is. Eventually, the students agree to use the present tense. Rebecca has made her point. This is the Hall of Honor. Christoph can't find Winkelstern's name. That's because he was not identified until the 1970s. He's buried with nearly 25,000 other soldiers in this common grave. We looked for the fallen football players and for soldiers who had attended the Friedrichs Gymnasium in Kassel. They are also buried here. One of them is Heinrich Winkelstern. Enemy planes dropped bombs on his unit, and two men were wounded. They had values like honor and love for the fatherland. And those values led people to go to war and lay down their lives sometimes just to gain a few meters of land. The next morning, the sun is shining. It's time to return home and to reflect on the human cost of World War I. And now a minute of silence for all the fallen comrades here. 